All right, we'll uh, open up uh, July 11th, uh, 2023, uh, Hadley Conservation Meeting. Um, got a couple things just to go through here quick. Uh, uh, my name, uh, I'm Ray Michkowski. Uh, Gary's Gary Pellis here is, uh, is out today. Uh, and so I guess I'll be uh, acting chairman for, uh, for tonight. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, Brent, Brendan Daniels, a uh, new member of, uh, of the Conservation Commission. He's taken over uh, uh, their uh, Edwin. Edwin, Edwin, Edwin Tusco left. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you got big, big shoes to fill. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure you'll uh, I'm sure you'll come right along and have some, have some things to say like Edwin always did. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll just start off with tonight's, uh, I don't know, start off with the uh, the agenda, get right into it. Um, first uh, first thing on the agenda is uh, enforce, it's actually an enforcement order <laughs> for a 105 uh, Stockbridge Road. What the hell? I don't know. Who's talking? I think someone was having trouble with their, with oh. connecting and, and, and muting and unmuting. <laughs> oh, okay. Very good. <laughs> Um, so first first item on the agenda um, is uh, an enforcement order for 105 Stockbridge Street. Uh, so uh, an enforcement order was issued uh, in response to uh, DEP comments issued on file 170294 uh, concerning filling of bordered, bordering vegetated wetlands at Fuller Grace Farm. The enforcement order requires a uh, wetland uh, restoration project or plan, sorry, and uh, Site uh, visit was conducted by uh, Kayla, Kayla Lobrio and Gary, Gary Pellis here on 628. And do we have anybody from full We do. Um, Erica Larner here for the applicants. Um, and we do have Julia Kay from Geosyntech and um, Usud, oh, and I can't remember his last name, who is with the UMass program and the um, farm operator, the landowner. Um, here because this is um, relevant for all of them as well, but um, I'm here to discuss the enforcement order with you folks tonight. Mm -hmm. So um, we got the enforcement order and looking at the aerials, it's clear there were changes and definitely some of it like the manure container, the um, concrete was when there was still an active uh, cow, uh, sorry, dairy farm going on. So it was within normal maintenance and improvement for ag use. And then there was some um, formalization of paddocks that was clearly not for the intention of agricultural use as the Wetland Protection Act doesn't regulate um, horse riding as agricultural, even though it's still a wonderful thing to do. Um, so we definitely did see the aerials and um, looking at the infrared and a few other things, I can definitely see that there was a, a bit of fill going in. One of the concerns is that I was supposed to go out in the last couple of weeks to delineate where the pre-existing wetland line was. Going out into the field was very, very difficult in order to get any kind of um, adequate samples. So basically I'm taking my hand auger and I twisted it all the way down to the ground and I'm not getting any signs of previous wetlands or anything that looks like wet. Um, I can't get down more than four feet with my hand auger. You know, the handle only goes down so far. And the difficulty is, is that even those holes have to be closed up right away so that the horses don't get injured. Um, if I can show you, um, you might be able to see. Uh, let me get. So one of the things that, let me just, because this ended up, once I started doing a dive into the research, it was a bit difficult. Uh, mass map, here we go. All right. I apologize, folks. I just completely lost my train of thought. Um, and thank you, and augers. Okay, uh, yeah. so, yep, thank you. All right, so as we go through here, and you can see 2001 aerials. And if we take that off, you can see that this was the area that they're saying is suspected wetlands. There was some um, Mark Stinson called out up here as well. And I have a few other aerial photo photographs why I wonder if that part wasn't. But knowing that, regardless of where it is, big issue is, is that any line is going right through all these paddocks. So the, the safety of the horses, it becomes very difficult. The holes have to be closed up immediately. And I couldn't get down deep enough with a hand auger um, or even shoveling. I really 
can't open up a three by four foot deep hole um, to get a good view, we would need to have probably some um, larger equipment and that's not particularly safe for the horses either. Um, so I'm wondering if this, can we have a conversation about, we could use the GIS and past aerials to give an estimate for what we could do for you know mitigation or replication. Um, because I think that we're gonna have a really hard time um, getting you a very accurate line of what existed uh, because what was it? 2005 um, and then 2008 is when really the work be, um, really did. And you can see that the difference is I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have a really difficult time with safely providing um, an accurate line. So I was hoping that we might be able to work with past GIS and come up with some estimates and get some guidance from you folks tonight about exactly how you'd like to see replication and mitigation. Um, because one of the other issues is that the best potential area for replication is actually off the property parcel. Um, so all of this is already wet down here and even further into this field. Um, so we were looking at this being a viable area and property lines, it's actually off property. Um, so I am hoping for guidance because we would very much like to make things appropriate and be in compliance and do the appropriate restorations, but I'm struggling with how we can do that on this site. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. And I'm, so how, uh, okay. how, uh, this, 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 I mean, this is, sounds like it's very active. Very active. Yep. It's a very active horse farm. Um, they actually uh, take in rescue horses. Um, and so there are people riding daily, I believe. Laura is here, but I believe there's approximately a dozen horses on the property at the moment. <clears throat> and what, what, uh, what, what kind of guidance do we get from, uh, from DEP as far as, or is it just a, uh, the guidance from DEP was prior to learning about this issue. So I, I don't know if you've spoken to Mark since. And I haven't because even with the idea of the GIS, mm -hmm. I thought that that could be, would be something that would be also reasonable. But with discovering the property line issue, mm -hmm. then I that came up and I'm like, hmm. so that came up this afternoon mm -hmm. um, and wasn't quite sure what to do with it. So I haven't spoken to him yet. Is there, is, I mean, is there, so this is pretty much, I mean, I've, I always thought it was the same property, to be honest with you. So I just, so I mean, do you, where, so that, that parcel to the north there of mm -hmm. that, that property line, is that, is, is that acceptable to do the replication in there? I mean, do we have, Billy, are you, are you representing? Yes. So I'm Bill Kelly. Oh, John Kelly's my cousin who owns oh, the property. Sure. Because I was going to say that I, I suspected that it was actually not the same owner. Yeah. Yeah. So. so it was split back when my father and my uncle split. Um, the real problem with the drainage there is the ditch itself. And that ditch work goes into the Mill River. As a kid growing up, that ditch was maintained constantly. Over the years, it just didn't get maintained. So that ditch is a real problem because the water is just stagnant. It doesn't move in there. And like the kind of up bottom right, where it's kind of a bigger expanse area, it's deep in there. The water just doesn't move. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Um, right in that area. It just does not move. Now, who owns the ditch? Does Johnny own the ditch or do we own the ditch? It's right. You know, it's I don't know. That line, every map you look at, the line looks different. You know, as far as where everything is, and, um, and GIS is frequently understood to be all, all part. Uh, yeah, especially yeah, at this sure. level, it's yeah. all looking at. It's yeah, definitely not a survey. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but based on estimates, the that area is. Where's another? Definitely picture? outside of that. Property so what, right? what year was this picture? So this is the right now we're looking at two thousand eight. Okay, and this is uh, two thousand twenty one. So the most current set of aerials we have. Yep. So I'm just here to protect <clears throat> our interest. Um, that ditch being so stagnant has really made that end of the farm kind of useless. The water table is completely pushed up, especially in a year like this year. We we just can't get in there. So I don't know. If, I'm just trying to get the right solution. To me, the real problem is 
the ditch and the stag, you know, being stagnant, and not getting into where it should get into the Mill River. And down where it gets into the Mill River, the mouth, the Mill River keeps channeling there because that river was uh, basically when they built in 58, when they did 116, they kind of changed the path. And now it's kind of following its own path. Um, so there's an issue there. I think if we can alleviate that problem, the landowners on either side have no issues. All right. Well, other than who can pay for it. Right. Well, there's I, obviously there's that. Uh, yeah. But I mean, you know, but as far as if we're going to do mitigation, if she's going to be, you know, drawing up plans to to uh, replicate, do replication is I think what you're asking for is, you know, how do you do it on somebody else's property? And whether and, and at any point in time since, um, you know, when I say the violator, it sounds very yeah, serious, know, but, yeah. you know, that, that he wasn't the violator. How do we hold him accountable if the replication grows on his property? And he says, no, thank you, because he didn't actually do any damage to right, himself. Right. right. Um, I had a few creative ideas and I don't know. This is not you have to do them. These are my ideas. There were um, I had a potential thought of let's see that this area right these there's a couple of areas here let me zoom in because i was just editing uh, so there's a couple of areas like right in here and up through here there's a bunch of bittersweet as well as further down here where where's your yeah, you're oh, okay. sorry i apologize i am not showing the right Stop sharing and let me make share the correct one. That should be better. Okay. All right. So in this location, um, to the south of the paddocks and up in this area as well, um, there is substantial bittersweet. Um, things like invasive plant management might be um, a potential option to enhance the existing wetlands that because that is all a wetland system. Um, <clears throat> and that would be over um, 20,000 square feet worth of space that I could see there and that I was looking at basing my general guesses on um, that this looked like the most likely fill amount and that that was about 11,000. And again, very rough estimates because really trying to get guidance on how you want me to evaluate it, that there's a variety of aerials that show through different years that are on. Let me show you this. This is why I'm confused. So <clears throat> here's the 90s and then, um, There we go. So 2001, that really doesn't look as extensively wet as it does, say, for the infrared. And if you're having a, a dairy operation, you're going to have a lot of manure, you're going to have a lot higher organic material. So you will get something that shows up in the infrared, but there is wetlands adjacent to it. So I was thinking that invasive plant mitigation might be an option or hearing that the ditch is a concern. One of the other pieces of feedback was whether or not that drainage swale was actually meant to be a stormwater drainage swale and whether it was constructed in compliance with stream crossing standards. Um, I had presumed that it would be a drainage ditch that would be should be maintained and that that would, depending on how the commission chooses to interpret, things that could also be a potential form of mitigation to um, use that. Additionally, the NOI we're submitting is strictly for stormwater improvements. Um, currently, the water is sheet flowing off the roads through the parking lot, through the barn, and picking up manure and nutrients and ending up in the drainage ditch in the wetlands. So even that NOI will have a huge nutrient reduction. So I don't know how they classify it, but <clears throat> there's a catch basin that um, you can bring your pointer to the yes, please. Let me zoom in. Right, right about where you just were. Yeah, you can zoom in. So bring your pointer up to the brown roof above the right area. Right just here. to the right of that, there's a catch basin there. Mm -hmm. That catch basin is piped to the ditch. To the ditch? I know for a fact it's completely plugged. Completely plugged. Now, 
that was meant as drainage. Back in the day when we were milking cows, the rain would come off the roof, shoot behind between the cow barn and that um, shop, which is was the shop at the time. The water would go down to that drainage ditch and then into that drain, into the catch basin, pipe to that drain, right pipe to that main drain, that would, the ditch that we're talking. Now, mm -hmm. you can see that was 2001. It's completely different right now. Oh, yeah. You know, it was probably maintained a little bit better back then. Um, but I know one of the problems they're getting water in their barn because I know that it builds up to a huge puddle. You know, yeah. the other day it was completely a well, huge puddle that going here. it's problem. not going anywhere. Right. It's meant to go to that ditch. Not only is the pipe plugged or collapsed or whatever it might be, the ditch is plugged as well, all the way down. So you can't just the ditch again, I want to emphasize, is the problem. Does um, anyone know or have any records of where the source of the flow from that um, culvert is coming from? I couldn't find an upstream end to a, for, for a stream. Um, so I'm not sure where that pipe is discharging from, because if it's discharging, say, road drainage, I, I think that does change things substantially or, um, in, you know, roof leaders and things like that. Um, I don't, I couldn't find anything on the registry of deeds. Um, so, I mean, you're saying that, at, there is at least roof leaders piped into the culvert to discharge there. No, it was just kind of outside gutters. You know, oh, sorry. The, not gutters, gutters, but just swales, yeah. pavement. That's directing. Came off the roof, went on the ground, went on the ground, ground behind the shop. Yeah, yeah. Then, like, the basin and then piped in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't know how much when the manure storage was built. I'm not sure what year that was. Looks like that was. Um, I know that that it looks like that was between um, here's 2000. Yeah, so between, uh, so 2005. So they started that in 2005 and 2008. It was fully constructed. So at that point in time, that was definitely a, a, an ag activity. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if that <clears throat> impeded things at the time. I know that was designed to let the solid settle in that pit. And then there was like three rock filter strips on the end of that. Now, is that even filtering anymore? Those rocks plug up after time. Right. Is that a maintenance issue that can be, you know, cleaned up? I'm not sure. The other thing was parallel with Roosevelt Street, there's drains on Roosevelt Street that drain in like kind of where the pink line is, right on this, you know, on the right side, on the farm side. Yep. Yeah. And there was always a ditch there that went down to the river. Yeah. So you can still kind of see through right where their driveway is for full of grace directly to the south of that driveway. There's a low spot right there. You can see it clear as day and it runs alongside that guardrail. So I think that initially went to that ditch at one point, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you can even see in this picture that ditch is actually a working ditch at the time. And now today, yes, you can't even and, access it. So right. And and so <clears throat> I mean, if it's a screen crossing um, or an intermittent screen and it's uh, it, it wasn't installed to DEP handbook standards after like 96, you're supposed to upgrade or cons consider it um, a BBW. I believe there are some other provisions that could be things that were constructed prior to the early 80s um, that as is um, in continuous maintenance. Um, so I'd be happy to try and find those citations. And because if part of the ongoing issue is that the um, stormwater is not being adequately treated, is not being able to flow adequately, and it's getting downstream to the Middle River, um, what the function of this swale is functioning for stormwater treatment. And I think that it might be a consideration for is that something to do for mitigation for improvement to allow that to flow better? Um, I'm open to a variety of ideas on this. Can you access, Had I was I looked at a map today, Hadley's GIS system. Um, and I it kind of it kind of shows up. For the assessors? Yeah. Yeah, it should be right on the website. <clears throat> it kind of shows up, a, a, I don't know, again, how accurate they are. I thought it's more a more accurate line of ownership and then kind of how the stream line goes up towards those barns. I think it's give or take 50 to 100 feet. Yeah, I, I, those lines I don't are. know. But do the, does the... Um,
do the lines showing the streams mean anything? Do the lines, oh, these? So, yeah, make it a little bit, if you make it a little bit bigger. You can see it just starts there. Though. Yeah, there it is right there, yeah. yeah. So it kind of just starts there. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, they do. And there are, um, I actually pulled up the USGS, uh, where is it? Because I wanted to make sure I could show you that, but I'll just put, 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 up, put up a mass map real fast because that's um, easy to see. So USGS maps, um, perennial and some intermittent streams. So while the GIS has picked up the channel, um, in a regulatory sense, um, this is definitely a perennial stream. If you see a dashed line, it's intermittent. And, and if you don't see it, then the commission is gonna look at a variety of factors, um, stream mm -hmm. stats, the, where the flow is coming from. And so. I mean, I initially, I think you gotta do the mitigation on the property itself. I think that is, and yeah, I don't think it's, it's going to get messy. Otherwise, it's going to get messy. Yeah, going between property lines. It, yes, and it'll and, be easier. But I think we're just we're just, we're just going to be opening up a can of worms. Um, can you clean the ditch without and keep everything on? You have, you're going to clean the ditch, right? Well, part of the, the plan. Part of the question think, is is that the EP is saying that this should be an intermittent stream and therefore not maintained. Um, this ditch? This ditch, yes. So that was part of it. I had originally called it out as non-jurisdictional as a um, stormwater swale and DEP saying that based on um, 1996 DEP <laughs> standards that I believe Mark's um, citation is right there, mm -hmm. that this should be considered an intermittent stream. I don't so believe it has much catch basin? What's that? Your stream starts at its catch basin? That is, that is why I suggested that it should be non-jurisdictional. Mm -hmm. um, so I struggle to see that it has habitat value that, you know, that that it does anything besides filter discharge from the catch, catch basin. Yeah, what are you gonna do there if you don't clean the ditch out? How can you do anything else? That's the first thing you do. You get that so it's flowing where it's supposed to be. Yeah, and then you worry about running into it. But there's trees down, I mean, it's, well, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's ever, there's a lot in there. Then you, and then again, <laughs> it's who owns it you know we own part well, we see, I can see every one of these things shows the property line it shows that little things yeah. crossing the property mm -hmm. line well what would you say it's yeah. on your property would yeah. it bother you well i know that i know that johnny's not gonna he, johnny's not gonna pay a dime to fix it so can we work with how to be a full grace or the state because i see the state is the one who applied for the Yes, for the grant for the stormwater improvements. Yes. And, and part of the conversation was timing the work mm -hmm. at the same time so that it's okay. um, cost efficient, there's equipment there, mm -hmm. so that, you know, and if some of the mitigation is to, you know, if, if we do consider this a non jurisdictional stream or swale and it can be maintained for that purpose, then that would be something that would be an appropriate part of the improvements. Um, but I can't. I would have to double check with the actual terms of the grant, but I think that that would fall within those terms of the grant. Um, but I do know that we would hope to time the work for when they actually look at doing construction right. fall or spring. Um, is so any that, of this APR land? Our half is not. Johnny's half is. Is it? Okay, because I was going to say, I don't mm -hmm. know if it's APR. They're but. both in 618 already. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, we're just we're, all we're doing is dig, there's a ditch. It's plugged, and we're dancing around like this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can put all the infrastructure on the ground by the barn that you want. You can put more water into a body one that's not moving. So it's not. see how big. You can see how big that thing is getting at the bottom. It, yes. Yes, up. and it's filling up, and there's definitely been a it's lot of. Be, um, it's got to be clean. You got to find a way around them and get that thing clean. Because where that ditch meets know. the fort, or oh, sorry, the middle river, it's only about this wide, and it's not moving yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. And then you got a belly in the middle of it, right by that corner. That's probably ten feet deep, and it's just stagnant algae water. It's not moving. You get a get a hold of the Secretary Ag or anything. Um, I, I wish. Um, part of the thing is is that they consider horses unless they are producing a commodity. They don't consider it agriculture. So um, mm -hmm. I don't. Be, yes, and it's. It, yeah, having spent some time doing work in towns similar to, to Hadley, uh, it's I find it to be a difficult distinction that I don't always think reflects reality on the ground. Um, 
ultimately, DEP will be a reviewer, give you the guidance, make citations, and the commission makes its decisions based within its discretion. If you feel that because there is no upward, no stream up there, and that it's being discharged from a culvert, that it is non-jurisdictional, the commission can make that determination. You know, there's oftentimes where commissions and DEP um, different opinions um, in either direction. Sometimes the commission is more strict, and sometimes mm -hmm. more forgiving. We can talk about this for 50 years unless you dig the thing up. No, it's going to change. Right. Maybe right. some more. You got any Clydesdales? <laughs> or how about some cheap? Get some oh, cheap out there? Well, um, yeah, you know, you have to do something. I, I ran into that a long time ago. You know, horse race horses or pleasure horses are not. They did that. Back in the 80s, they were talking like that. That's not a farm thing. You know, you're never eligible for any money for that. Never. But that had, that's got to be done first. You got to find a way to do that. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Works. I think the whole thing's got to be done in conjunction, just like you're saying. Yes. Yeah. You know, all, all at the same time. I, you know, nothing's good. Like happen. I was saying, I think, I think, you know, your mitigation, your replication, leave it on the property, leave it on the south side, like you were suggesting. I think. I Look think, at the invasive. I, I kind of, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I, I like that idea. You know, you know uh, it's not a vote, you know, until you guys decide to ratify, but I'm hearing that feedback. You know, the, other, yeah. the other board members want yeah. to say, but, um, you know, there's that, but then you're obviously you're going to be doing, you're going to be treating this water here. You're going to be doing stuff so, with it. So you got to, you got to, you got to get it out the, into that brook. Otherwise it's just going to have, you're going to have the same problem you've been having. Right, for, right. And, and we had 10, actually, 15 years here. and we had pulled the outfall back from the edge of the BV, BVW or what I personally have the opinion that is non-jurisdictional, but you know, it, Professionals can have different opinions without mm -hmm. it being an issue. Um, it, it was pulled out of there to avoid it being, say, a point source discharge. Um, and I think that that actually, in a way, has it's not as good of a treatment. I think rather than trying to get it through the swale with a, you know, a, a grassy swale is a fabulous nutrient re reducer. Right. So, you know, I, I think that in terms of its function being able to have that be a non-jurisdictional soil that can be maintained, that is without any agriculture um, questions within the commission's discretion, I think that would allow us to be able to do um, a much better job of managing the stormwater on the site. Um, and I guess before we go to consider like the mitigation, I'm hearing the invasive is a decent idea, keeping it on the property and that, Clearing the ditch is something that the commission thinks would be a benefit to the whole the yes. multiple property. 100%. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, I mean, guys, yeah. 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 Not going to do anything. That's right. Anything right there. Right. Right. I mean, I think the key is you got to get, get that opened up. Right. Yeah. And then we'll work with you on the reputation, you know? Yeah. 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 So, what do you want from us? What do you want us to do? <laughs> How about finding? Well, I would like for you guys to actually say none of this happened and hand my client a $10,000 check. How's that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what I would love to do is to have a chance to, to have you folks ratify the enforcement order. I would suggest, with all respect, that you guys are the regulators, amendments that would say um, develop a mitigation plan for invasive plant removal. And um, if you folks are amenable to it with the understanding that you would hear the um, NOI at your next meeting um, with, and also uh, assume that we would clear the swale and, yeah. and work off of that assumption until you make your determination under an official vote with the yeah. um, NOI. That's good, yeah. Yeah, all right. I Because I think that is something we can do. We can achieve that. Um, right. No, I, I agree with that. That's yeah, that, I think that'll work good. Right. Okay. Yep. Okay. yep. So I think now we need to make a motion. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. order under the, this under is the another one of my sister from mm -hmm. my brother in law. Oh, wait, can you guys add? Let me scroll you up and you can tell me. Yeah. The Here's the the this one right so, here? Yeah. 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 And then that says you guys here. Yeah. 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 Non jurisdictional yeah. and only conditions of the die for. Like, Definitely yeah. one of my favorite yeah. times. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. Yeah. So my wife, like, my wife works at Stockbridge Correct. And she actually, when I saw whatever his, the gentleman's name was, she actually um, talked on the thing. I know it. And I know the grant that he's going for, when my wife asked him, he said it couldn't be used for the ditch. It was just used for some external drainage around the building. So 
I don't know if they can train the course in that and try to get to the root of the problem, which is the ditch. And well, and I think it's um, force for water management, and that I think that we'll have to discuss how we can tie that in. And knowing that if we have equipment on site, and that's when extra money has to come out, at least all the funds have been raised. And I think that's the goal is yeah. minimize and find things that we can do achievably. Yeah, certainly I'm willing to work with in you know, full grace or whoever, this, whoever it might be to try to get this problem resolved. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to need a motion to uh, to ratify this enforcement order. I'll make it um, along, <laughs> along with the, the approved amendments of uh, you know, I'm looking for all, uh, ditch bearing, ditch bearing, ditch bearing, yep. and uh, and and uh, replication in the um, in the inv invasive areas. So that, mitigation, mitigation, mitigation. Yeah, mitigation. Yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, that's mitigation. okay. Yeah, mitigation yeah. In, in the invasive areas that we're, in, we're discussing south of of the of the uh, of the track where we're talking about. Perfect. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That this well is non-jurisdictional for me. Voting that this well is non-jurisdictional. That's what we can do. Is, well, that, I think we can decide. Is what and what the, are, the drainage ditch that we were talking the swale that we're talking about right. improving the conditions over? Right. And do they need to go through DEP approval? Right. So they got to go through Mark. It is well, going through both DEP and you guys. Yeah. So when it goes up so to there, go, okay. yeah. So they right. send the comments down, and then so you, you guys can decide right. if you think they are. You make the basic determination. You take the evidence from Mark, evidence from me, and then you determine because you're local and on the ground, what is actually effective for this site. So, and so in addition to that motion, we'll, we'll um, well, that's, I think it's just one motion. We're ratifying the okay. enforcement order with the amendments and the changes to, this is the okay. addition to the enforcement order. Um, and I think also we should include the extension of the date. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Because um, I, I would expect to be able to have for your next meeting a plan for you guys to, to review, and we would be coming back with the actual um, discussion for the actual filing as well for the next meeting. Yeah. So I would have materials for you, but it would be great if we could have an extension for when the work needed to be constructed. Um, it can be if we need to get heavy equipment onto the site to do things. It's, it's Going to be difficult and expensive to do it separate from any other work. Um, so if we could potentially get to July 30th, 2024, because that is the end of the grant and all construction must be done by then. Um, so I know that every all the equipment it'll be stabilized, we should be done by that date. Okay. Um, and then there's also a condition that the replacement area should be stabilized by the, no later than the close of day business on October 1st, 2023. Um, I'm assuming we should move that later as well. Yes, I would say um, if the start, um, if, if you just adjusted it to have the work completed and stabilized by June 30th, 2024, I think that might cover all of it. And then whether we started this fall construction or the spring, but that we have a deadline of June next year. Everything's done. I think that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Now I need a motion. Motion to ratify. Matt, motion to ratify as read. All right. No. Yeah. With 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 the uh, with all the amendments. How am I doing? <laughs> the best. Sorry. Part, <laughs> no. The best part about everything being recorded. Is that you can go back and catch it later. Yeah, yep, right, yep, right, right, right. Yep. So, okay. so it's really there, all the- Gary, sorry. Um, okay. <laughs> to be honest, I'm a little nervous too. So I feel like I've been okay. stuttering. <laughs> right. um, and are we, so are we set now? Someone needs to make a motion. We did it. Okay, and then did it. a second. Yep. Okay, so we need to do a vote. Are we in all in favor? Okay. Okay, okay. so I, now I, here on the second. Yep, perfect. Okay. Um, next on the agenda is other business. Two forty three Russell Street concerns. Do we have anybody from two forty three Russell Street? I can find that. I love this one. 
Okay. Yes. Um, so this is an issue that I have been in communication with the building and planning departments with. Um, Sorry. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do whatever we want to Thank you. No. Thank you very much um, to the commission and, and Kayla for being so helpful in working with things. Thank you. Um, the first one is really like after you know, you can just put content in here. Thank you. And I'm so sorry, I realized the early line issue after we discussed it. I figured. I was like, but thank so you. I'll send the amended enforcement order. Perfect. Okay. And I'll make sure you get something you before guys. the next meeting. Okay. Okay. August 3rd. August 3rd. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, what do we got? So that's pretty much the only uh, the, big, the big one that we have on the uh, on the agenda tonight. Um, we're, we'll get on to other business right now. Now, the, I guess we got something going on at 243 Russell Street. Yeah, there's some been some concerns um, at the in the Green Gardens property um, that I'm in communication with the building and planning department with on. Um, and I ha I had the idea that I was going to have a, a letter drafted um, to send to the property owner by today, but I don't. And it seems that they're going to be attending the planning board meeting um, in that they're going to figure some stuff out before they take it to consideration. So we'll save it for next meeting. Okay. Um, and then build our MACC membership is up for renewal. I have the invoice here and it's, it's, I think, I don't know what's the price per member, but it was going to cost $365 for the year for all of us to become members of MACC. They have online resources, events, um, and Annual conference. So I think I'd like to have a vote if we want to. Yeah, anyways, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no. Um, I make a motion to renew the membership for for the Mac and send three hundred and sixty five yes dollars dollars and change or whatever it is uh, to renew our membership. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay, okay, great. And then I'm gonna pass this around. Just make sure that all your information is correct. And I think we need to. Add your information. Sure. To the internal of them. Okay. And then the last thing is the Zoom minutes. So make sure I have a copy if anybody wants to look. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know how it works. If you are in the meeting, you can vote on the minutes. If, you, if Brandon can vote on the minutes. Um, I don't think you. Technically, can right unless you were. I don't know. Um, I, think I don't think you have to, but you, 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 yeah. you, you got you enough for a form anyway. Yeah, so. yeah. So, um, all right. I make a motion to uh, Steve. You all start. Yep. yep. I make a motion to uh, to approve and uh, approve the meeting, uh, minute, meeting minutes. I'm sorry of June 13th, 2023. Have the Conservation Commission. Also, here's second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The last thing that didn't make it onto the agenda is just so last meeting we voted to continue the motion for file one seventy two ninety four. Uh, 105 Stockbridge Street to this meeting, which I just didn't put on the agenda, but we, we should vote to continue it to the August 8th meeting. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, he, uh, he came down today. He just forgot. <laughs> you get your email, I guess. You're talking about uh, this given? No, this is no, 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 the same thing. We have folks right here. Do the, do the, do the, do the, oh, the race. Okay. 
All right. No. Um. Yeah. I make a motion. I make a motion to continue that meeting on yeah. to to uh to to our right. next meeting on on when August eighth. August eighth at six thirty. At six thirty p.m. Second. All in favor? All right. Okay. Great. All right. Is it clear to vote to the board? Yeah. Yeah. Um. This wasn't. Don't have to worry about that. No. All right, uh, I think we're pretty much all set for tonight. Uh, I don't see anybody else. Or is anybody else online or anything like that that has anything to say? Or um, someone called the reminder, but they were. I think they're just watching. Oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, I make a motion to uh, to adjourn tonight's meeting. Second. Second by Gordon. All in favor. Uh, All right. Thank you very much. And then we just say meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned.